Hi there and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrig. But in this video I'm actually going to be going through a study skill tip and that is looking at how to write personal statements for university applications. So the first thing is just to go through what is a personal statement. So these are the term that we used for part of the application that is needed for the UK applications for university. They are only 4,000 characters long, not 4,000 words. So typically it's about one page typed up in Word. And the purpose is for you to be able to write about yourself. The rest of the UCAS application is very factual and generic. It's address, date of birth, um, other personal circumstances and qualifications. So the only other way for you to make yourself stand out is this document. So you'd need to include why you want to study the degree, really demonstrate the love for the subject or degree you're applying for, experiences and skills you have which are relevant and really show off why you would be an asset to that university and why you're interesting to teach. So it's really important this bit of your application for those reasons and the admissions team the sorts of things they'll be using for using the personal statement for is if it is an interview subject like medicine or dentistry or you're applying for Oxbridge, um, you will have to have an interview. Some others interview as well, and they will pick out particular examples from your personal statement to question you on. It's also used if they can't quite decide between students who on paper have very similar grades, they might have a similar reference, they'll then use the personal statement to try and determine between which two they should give the offer to. If you don't happen to get the grades that you need to get into university on results day, you can apply through something called clearing, which is when you phone up to see which universities have spaces left on each of their courses and will accept you with your grades. And they will want to see your personal statement. It also helps, as I said over on this side, for the admissions team to decide would you be a really interesting student to have on their team that the lecturers are going to enjoy teaching. So how to lay out your personal statement then. So I've put together this template, a very brief template of how you would arrange it. So paragraph one is where you'd say the really, really important parts to hook the reader in why you want to study that subject and this is by far the most important paragraph the middle paragraphs would be demonstrating the points from paragraph one in more detail so you really need to show that you have a passion or it might be a vocation so if you are thinking about um, any sort of science vocation in healthcare nhs it's demonstrating your love for the nhs and for helping others also skills you've developed and this could be through your a levels or whichever qualifications you're studying uh, voluntary work extra reading courses and much much more the penultimate paragraph if you have space for this will be where you write about your non-subject related extracurricular just to show you are an all-rounded person and you have more to you than just the one subject you're applying to and then the final paragraph is a very, very short conclusion where you give your final statement as to why they should offer you a position. So some key points in general, just about all of those paragraphs, I've already stated it's 4,000 characters, not words. And when you're using Microsoft Word, it does tell you your characters, so you can check that. Try to avoid any cheesy quotes or phrases because often that can come across quite fake um, and a lot of admissions teams don't appreciate them and also just check that you're not repeating the same word at the start of every sentence or paragraph or you're not overusing any particular phrase. Make sure you are being completely honest because as I said they will be questioning you on this at interview and do not plagiarise because they do check for plagiarism. So don't copy anything that you find on the internet, any older siblings or friends application forms, make sure it is completely your own writing. Be very specific about any example you talk about as well. And that actually links to this point down here, make sure that any experience or skills you talk about 
provide the evidence of what you did, as in a description and what you learned. When you come to structure, make sure that at least 70% is demonstrating your experience and your love of the subject. So that would be paragraph one and your middle paragraphs and also your final paragraph. So the penultimate paragraph is where you would demonstrate your other general skills. And I'll come to give more detail on all of those shortly. It's quite good if you can show your own opinions and thoughts, if you are talking about any relevant news stories or articles that you've read, um, any ethical opinions are really good because that demonstrates you would be an interesting person to teach. And also just in general, think about the skills that a university student should have. So commitment, independent study skills, being a team player, reliable, because that is what they want to see. So let's go through each paragraph then. Paragraph one, this is the most important paragraph because that is the paragraph that will hook the reader to carry on reading because sometimes they won't go beyond the first paragraph if it really doesn't look that good. So it is the hardest paragraph to write because of that emphasis of it being the most important. So I always suggest leave this to the end. Otherwise, it makes it very difficult to write your personal statement if you're focusing too much on how to start. So write that at the end when you've got a feel of what the rest of your statement looks like. The key things to get across in this first paragraph are to demonstrate your enthusiasm and motivation for the subject you're applying for. So it might be when or what developed your curiosity or love for this subject area or potential vocation. If it is a vocation, also you could include in that first paragraph, just briefly, why you think you'd be really good. So think about medicine or if you are applying to be a paramedic, can you give any examples that are very brief, it's just an introduction, to demonstrate maybe your resilience or your commitment to the cause, to show that you're a very strong person emotionally maybe, and so on. And then lastly, try and sound unique, which is very, very hard because lots of students are writing these and you'll have similar experiences because of going through similar schooling. But if you do have any examples which are slightly different that do show your love for science or show one of the skills mentioned up here, try and get that in the first paragraph to make you sound really interesting and make the admissions team want to read further. Now the paragraphs in the middle are kind of an extension of the first paragraph and what I'd suggest to start with is if you know any universities you're quite interested in applying to already, go to their website for your course that you want to apply to and often they will give you a list of skills they expect their applicants to have. So use that skills list as a starting point and then think about what voluntary work have you done? or any work experience, any clubs you're in inside or outside of school, any community work, any extra reading, anything like that at all, which you can apply to those skills that they are stating. So I've got some examples here, um, which relate to science related courses, and some of them are more specific to the vocational ones, but these often come up as the types of skills they want you to demonstrate that you possess. But just to make you aware, when you are writing these paragraphs, make sure you are giving evidence. So it's not particularly impressive if you just write a paragraph saying, I'm an incredibly high achieving academic student, um, but I've also demonstrated I'm resilient, I can do this, do that, and just list the statements. Because anyone can write a list like that. It's not unique and it's not interesting. So avoid just writing lists of skills. It's far better if you actually write a paragraph discussing an experience you've had or an anecdote which will demonstrate that particular skill. You don't have to slap it in their face and say, I am ethical. They will work it out from what you have written that you are ethical or not. So if you have managed to have any experience, work experience, let's say if you're a medic at um, a care home, for example, Think of an example where you might have really struggled initially to communicate with one of the um, patients there. 
what was the challenge and how did you overcome it and how did that make you feel? And that will demonstrate excellent communication skills. It demonstrates empathy, a desire to help people whilst giving a really personal and unique example, which is far more interesting than just stating, I worked at an old people's home and this developed my communication skills. So that's how to structure these middle paragraphs. Now you might be going for a science degree which doesn't really focus so much on the work experience and instead it's really demonstrating then your love for that subject whether it's a pure biology biological sciences psychology think about have you attended any additional lectures outside of school watched any um, documentaries listened to podcasts read any books and that would be more your focus and you'd be picking up what you learned from that and why you found it so interesting so then your penultimate paragraph this is where you get to show the other side of you now it is difficult because you only have four thousand characters so sometimes people do run out of space to write this however if you are incredibly selective in your first few paragraphs and very concise in your writing, you should have enough space for this paragraph. And it is quite important to have if you can fit it in because it shows them what kind of person you are and how you'll fit into the general university community. So the sorts of examples that people might put in this penultimate paragraph is any sports teams or sports, dance, things like that that they've done for a period of time. It's not particularly relevant if you've literally just started doing yoga. Um, they want to know for at least maybe a year something you've been committed to. Same idea of musical instruments or any musical um, clubs you're in. Um, DOV and NCS would fall under here. Um, any art or design projects or maybe you're more technical and it's more to do with ICT or programming you might have done and computing or voluntary work or charity work that doesn't really fit into your subject, but it really does show that you care for your community. You maybe have campaigned for anything in your community as well. So finally, the last paragraph, very short, and it's a conclusion just to round off a summary of why they should offer you a position. So try not to be too short and vague. So for example, this one here isn't particularly good if you just finished off saying, therefore, I'm excited about studying biology, for example. A much stronger ending would be um, this one here. So I'm passionate about contributing towards genetic research to help improve future diagnosis and treatment of genetic diseases. And I'm therefore highly determined and motivated to make the most of my genetics degree. Now I've put in italics the bits that you would substitute out for whatever it is that you would be applying for. But as I said, don't plagiarize, make sure you don't just copy this because otherwise lots of you are gonna have the same end paragraph. This is just to demonstrate the difference between a strong and a weak final paragraph. So that is it. I hope you have found this helpful to get you started and writing your personal statements.